Welcome to the And She Looked Up Creative Hour podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Hartfield, and I'm an artist and an entrepreneur. And yes, those two things can go together. This podcast is for the artists, the creatives, and the makers who want to find a way to make a living doing what they love. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the And She Looked Up podcast. I'm your host, Melissa, and this week it is Heather Travis's monthly visit to the show. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Heather. Hi. I feel I feel like I'm in. Um, I feel like I should pop through the door with the giant giraffe on. What was that show? And like pop my head in the friendly giant. The friendly I feel giant. like I should like. I'm I'm here for my monthly visit. <laughs> We've actually got quite a few new people listening to the podcast. So if you are not familiar with Heather, Heather is an artist who specializes in large scale paintings and murals. She does smaller things too. And she is also the owner of her own PR firm. So she joins us once a month, usually about that, um, to chat about the business of creating for a living. And that's what she's doing here this week. And this week, we are going to be talking about why your logo is not your brand. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I think this is a very common misconception. I see this all the time. I see this as a graphic mm -hmm. designer, just people who come to me who are looking for a logo, who mm -hmm. feel like that that's the check mark off of the branding checklist mm. logo mm -hmm. done I have my brand but I also see this a lot in various Facebook groups and course groups and things that I'm in where people will ask for a critique of their website they may have a gorgeous logo in many instances they do have a gorgeous logo but mm. the rest of the site is not brand cohesive um, things like the packaging doesn't match or the photography doesn't tell the story of the brand or there simply just isn't anything on the website that explains mm -hmm. the story of the brand or makes the customer have an immediate connection or know exactly what this company is about. And that's what we're going to dive into today. We're going to be talking about all the different touch points in your business that make up your brand and why each of them has to come together with your brand story. So mm -hmm. we're going to start with the obvious touch points. Um, and these are things that you've probably already thought about. And then we're going to move to what are the less obvious touch points. When I say less obvious, I don't mean less important. In many cases, they may actually be the yeah. most important yes. touch points. Yes. Yes. Um, so we're going to be talking about all of that today. But before we do that, let's talk about what branding actually is and Heather I'm going to maybe throw this one to you first and as somebody who works both as an artist and as a PR professional what do you think of when you hear the word brand your brand and this is something I say and have said for years and and I'm not alone in this your brand is not what you say it is it's what your customers say mm -hmm. it is and so if you think about it that way, they're not going to say your brand is a hot pink circle with a swooshy swoopy stripe. They're not describing your logo. Um, they're describing the feeling they get when they interact with you. They're describing uh, the sensations, the vis visual sensations, the sensory sensations. They're describing the feeling they get after working with you on a project. There is so much more to your brand than the visual things. It's what your customers say it is. And, and ideally, that's what you're saying as well. But I think what we're going to really dive down into is that if you focus on those obvious touch points, and forget about those less obvious ones, you're going to have such a diluted brand, your customers aren't even going to know if they're buying from you or from somebody else. Because the only difference is the logo. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Your brand, I think, is the soul of your business. Really. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in some cases, that might be you. Like if you're a yep. service provider, um, yep. like a photographer or a writer or um, a designer, your brand might be you. Or, or yeah. the version of you that you put out to the world, I guess. Mm -hmm. That sounds weird, but... Um. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's what makes you different, right? Yes. Like the brand, my brand as an artist is 
is what makes me an artist, yes, right? It's and wrapped up in your style, it's wrapped absolutely. up in your personality. There's a lot of yeah. different pieces to it. Now, if you have a, a, a company where you're making products, so let's say you're selling uh, mm -hmm. your jewelry or your art or things like that, where maybe you don't use your personal name, like you use your name as, yes. as, yep. as an artist, I use a company name. Yep. Um, and so in those cases, what you're communicating to the customer in terms of what these products are, what the whole company is, like what the company is as a whole. I am not mm -hmm. being articulate. I'm very sorry about that. I might edit this out. <laughs> um, so essentially what we're going to be talking today about today is your brand is what your customer says it is, but you also need to have a very clear understanding yeah inside <laughs> internally yes. what message you're trying to put out there to a potential client or a potential customer yeah. so and this is something that you have to think about quite a bit it goes so far beyond a logo oh um so far beyond and this may not be something that you figure out in your first year of business that's another thing to be very aware of um, totally and your brand can evolve brands evolve mm -hmm. all the time um yep. If you think about some of the most recognizable brands out there, whether you're a fan of their what they do or not, think about mm -hmm. things like Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. McDonald's, mm -hmm. Mercedes, Apple. Yep. All of those brands, when you hear the name, you have a reaction. Like yes. you have an immediate reaction to who they are, what they do. Um, but those brands have been around for decades. And in some cases, much longer than that. Much longer than that, yeah. Yeah, and... And, you know, Coca-Cola has a very specific brand message that they have been communicating for over a century. Yeah. And it hasn't really changed. No. They've changed the way they communicate it. They've changed some of the visuals around how they communicate it. But that logo has stayed the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's they know within their company what their brand is. And they're very good. Yes. At reinforcing that message at every turn. So um, so that's kind of what you have to think about when it comes to your brand. You want to create a certain image in your customer or client's head about who they're going to be dealing with, what they're yeah. going to be buying. And as I said, it goes so much further than a logo. So we're going to dive into the obvious touch points right now. And as most of the obvious touch points that we're going to be talking about are what I would actually call, they're not your brand, they're physical assets of mm -hmm. your brand. Of your brand. Yes. Yeah. So these are the things, usually visual, that communicate visually to your potential customer or client who you mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you have to know who you are <laughs> exactly. before you and can communicate that to anybody. Yes. And you need to do the less obvious stuff first because if you're sitting down with a if you called Melissa and said I need a logo and Melissa says great tell me about your company and you say well the company name is ABC Company Inc and I want the logo to be pink and Melissa's like that is fabulous but that doesn't help me at all because you want the logo to communicate the story and if you're not clear on the story the logo is not going to tie everything back in so you these less obvious things that we're talking about first, they actually need to be actioned as part of your like second. Yes. Really? Yeah. Yes. So let's get these obvious ones out of the way because they're obvious. Yep. <laughs> so the first one is your logo. So mm -hmm. a logo does not have to be pretty. Nope. I just want to say that right now. This is one of the things when I see people put logos up that their designers have created for them into Facebook groups and try to get the opinion of the masses. Mm -hmm. And you see so many people say, oh, that one's pretty. Oh, this one's pretty. I like that one. That one's really cute. Mm -hmm. That's not helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't, you're, <laughs> that's great that you have a pretty logo, but does it actually say anything about what you are and what you do? Yes. Okay. Is it visually memorable? Mm-hmm. Is it simple? So there are a lot of important things you have to think about with a logo. First of all, is it is it easily recognizable from a distance? That's a big one. That's a huge one. And it gets, I see so many 
very intricate logos being designed lately, very delicate, very pretty, and they're gorgeous. But if you were standing on the other side of the street, you wouldn't be able to read the company name. (laughs) Exactly. Like you want to be those golden arches down the I-97 and be like, yep. So yes, that's those, my destination. those brands that I mentioned earlier, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Mercedes, Apple, their logos are exceptionally simple. Yeah. They're instantly recognizable. You yeah. can spot them at a distance. They look good in black and white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is another thing that's important. You have to think about whether or not your logo is visually appealing in grayscale or black and white. Because in a yeah. lot of print, printing instances, that's how it will have to be shown. Mm. If you are somebody who wants to sponsor events, if you are somebody who wants to participate in events, it could be a market, it could be um, a gallery opening, or it could be um, so many different things. If, and this is something I learned running my other company where we did a lot of events and I had to create the programs and the sponsorship boards and the signage. And I was very quickly, I was like, this is a terrible logo. This is a good logo. (laughs) Like I knew the logos that I like to work (laughs) with. So this is something you have to think about. If you're going to have your logo on a board with other logos, does your logo stand out? Is it visually recognizable immediately? Those are the things you need to think about as well as does it communicate what your brand is about. Logos are very complicated. You can buy a $35 logo off of Etsy and it'll be pretty. I guarantee you it'll be cute, Mm -hmm. it'll be pretty, but Mm -hmm. is it useful? (laughs) And I don't even have a logo for my business because I I still have not figured out what that needs to be. Mm -hmm. Like if that says anything, I know all my other stuff. And that's okay, you can use one of those (laughs) $35 logos from Etsy until you figure it out. Exactly, So exactly. Food Bloggers of Canada, which is my other business, our first logo was crap. <laughs> it was terrible. And I'm trying I just, to think back. I can't remember it. It was the college um, varsity lettering. Oh, yes. yes. I remember that. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes it was yes, terrible. Okay. Um, and at the time, we were like, oh, we're going to be about education. So this is kind of cute. And it was red and white because we were Canadian. And it was great. We did our second logo came out, I think, three or four years later. And I am so proud of that logo. It is one of the best logos I've ever done. It is one of the best branding jobs I've ever done. But that logo, I took all the stuff I learned through running events and working with brands, so many brands during that period, and I poured it all into that new logo. And the new logo, super simple. It's a red circle with white lettering, very simple white lettering. It is instantly recognizable if you are in our industry in our community you know who that belongs to and the branding that went along with it 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 was exactly what it needed to be but Mm -hmm. the point is we didn't get there in year one we got there year four right so that's something to kind of keep in mind your logo doesn't have to be perfect the first time out it's just something it's a placeholder Totally. Um, and having and having a logo is not critical for your business to run. But knowing not. what your business is, like all the stuff that we're going to get to, that is actually way more critical to the success of your business right. than you having a logo. Yes. You can just use something text-based for the first few years. Totally. Just pick a nice font exactly. and use that as your, as your logo. Exactly. Pick two fonts. I mean, a lot of logos, that's all they are. They're just a couple of fonts yeah. that are yeah. manipulated. Just make sure it's spelled right. <laughs> Exactly. Make sure it's spelled right. Um, So some other obvious touch points are things like your brand palette. This is your color scheme for your brand, which should obviously reflect what your brand is about. If you're a brand that is highly environmentally conscious, um, you're minimalist, all those types of things, that should be reflected in Mm -hmm. your color. Okay. And different colors have meanings. This is something that a graphic designer can help you with, but different colors signify different emotions, different feelings and different meanings. And so, um, there are some colors out there that in certain cultures are not good colors to use. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So you need to be aware of those types of things. And yes, your palette should reflect the overall feel of your brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you have your website. Actually, I'm going to leave website to the end because that's where you kind of tie all these things together. together. Yeah. 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 Um, Another one of the obvious touch points is your social media profiles. You want to utilize your brand colors, your palette. You want to utilize your logo, all those types of things. Those are going to be, those should be consistent across all your social media profiles. And this is one of the things with your visual, your, your brand assets, your visual brand assets 
consistency. They need yep. to be consistent over and over again. You are trying to subliminally mm -hmm. send a message into your customer's subconscious. Yeah. And this is why, think about like FedEx and UPS, mm -hmm. hugely recognizable logos. Yeah. You know why they're hugely recognizable? People aren't shipping, you know, the average person isn't shipping stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. They're recognizable because you see their trucks, you see their airplanes, like they're walking billboards for those yeah. logos. So they're in yeah. your conscious when you're sitting in traffic and the UPS truck is next to you. Yes. You know who they are, right? So it's just, it's, it's repetitive stream of conscious getting mm -hmm. it into you. So this is where you want to be super consistent across all of yeah. these visual marketing tools. And so it's like the same profile photo or the same logo or both. It's the same header image. It's the same or similar bio written. Yes. It's like you need to be consistent about that. I want to know, and I always use this analogy with customers, think of, think of a giant house party and every single room is a different social media platform. You've got Instagram and Snapchat and YouTube and every different room in the house is a different social media platform. And you wander through the house and when you get to every room, you walk in and you're like, I swear to Christ, I saw that girl in the other room. And then you get to the other room and you're like, I know nope, that girl was just in the Instagram room. That's the way you want to feel like you're going crazy because the same person is at every single room in the party. And that's the way your social media profiles should be is it should be consistent that everybody knows that's Heather or that's Melissa or that's whomever. That sounds like a really weird movie. You know, can know you do, right? that would be such a crazy movie. You, every room you walk into, there she yeah. is. <laughs> that would be really disturbing. It's like a, probably like a combination of the, have you been watching, this is a total distraction, but that show Russian Doll, ooh, that, no. anyway. Um, oh. So good. Anyway, we digress. Yes. That, your social media profiles, it should feel the same for all of it. And the same thing with, Another obvious touch point, which is moving on to our list, but your packaging and your shipping supplies. Yes. So there's two kinds of packaging. There is the packaging that you send things to as if you, if you sell through wholesale. Mm -hmm. So that is like your product packaging. Okay. Yep. So again, it should have your logo on it. It should reflect your brand. It should be consistent across all your packaging. All your packaging should look like it came from the same place. Same logo, same typeface, all that kind of stuff. Then there's the packaging that you might do as somebody who sells direct to consumers. So this is like if you are on, if you if you're handmade and you're selling via Etsy or your own website, and the person's ordering directly from you and you're sending it to them. And those are things like that might be you know the tissue paper that you use or the mm -hmm. type of box that you use. You might have custom boxes. You may have custom poly mailers. Those kinds of things. Again consistent i see so many yep. people who are like oh i just look for the best deal on amazon that's great and i appreciate why you're doing that but that means you're going to get something that looks different almost every time every time <laughs> yeah and you can have differences in your packaging when mm -hmm. you're sending out direct to consumer but it should be planned well and and think of it and this is obviously getting down into the weeds and could be a whole other topic unto itself, but it, think of it as making your life really e efficient. Because if you have different packaging, different supplies, everything's willy nilly, and you're just trying to bake a cake from whatever you have on hand every time, it's gonna be a very frustrating, messy, and unfulfilling procedure. Whereas if there's, if you know, if your packaging is consistent, it's very easy what the next step in the process is. And then I package it here, and then I move on to this here, mm -hmm. and then it gets the sticker here, and then it goes out the door. And it's so much easier to put those checks in boxes and be like, done, 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 as opposed to like, oh, I'm out of packaging, I need to order more from Amazon. Oh, and then I need this, I'll just oh, and then I'll just use exactly, sticker, and I'll just or whatever, exactly. yeah. <laughs> and like that hap, that ha sort of half-assedness is actually wasting your time so it, like being on brand in terms of making sure all of this stuff is in order is actually going to save you time to do more stuff like possibly yeah. sell more stuff and if you're the type of this happens to me all the time 
I get bored with the same thing over and over again. And if you're the mm-hmm. type of person who feels that way, you can have seasonal changes. So yes. you might have a specific way of wrapping for Christmas or the mm-hmm. holiday season. You might have something specific for spring. You might do a special edition sticker or something. I know yep. a few handmade businesses that send out um, a free, one girl sends out a free bookmark. Her, so cute. her stuff has nothing to do with reading, but she sends out a free bookmark and it's different with every seasonal release. And so, so the cute. bookmarks have actually become collectible in their own right. Um, but that's a planned packaging totally. change. So the, the packaging is still 100% on brand, but you have an opportunity to mix it up a little bit so you don't start to get bored. Yes. Um, shipping supplies, very similar to packaging. Um, a lot of us are just going to use plain brown boxes and or plain mm-hmm. white boxes but if you are somebody who has gone and had custom shipping um supplies made you can have boxes printed with your logo you can have packing mm-hmm. tape printed with your logo on it again consistency yep. consistency and this- if there is no consistency and this is jumping into the less obvious touch points but if for instance you use a random smattering of cardboard and you, if I ordered a painting from you and it came wrapped in a, in a half of a Cheer- Cheerios box and half of a special K box, because that's how it could come to me. And you were using things out of the recycling to just lessen your footprint and save on costs. Tell me that story. Yes. I want, yes. I want to know when I hit buy on your website and it says, we're so excited to ship you a package. Heads up, when we shit send our packages, we rifle through our neighbor's recycling boxes and find the best blah, 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 so that we can blah, blah, blah. Tell me the story. Because then when I get this rando box, <laughs> I'm not sitting there going, huh, okay, what kind of Mickey Mouse operation is this? No, instead, instead it's like, your brand story right there in the packaging. That's exactly it. And yes. so think of it like it's, it's you've and you've communicated that to me in advance yes. and so no matter what option you choose out of all of these like logo brand palette website whatever your decisions are there should be a story behind it and you need to communicate that story that's yeah. that's your brand the exactly. story is your brand yes and like What's your brand palette, Heather? My brand palette is all the colors. Why? Because all the colors, right? <laughs> it makes that makes perfect sense. But if my brand palette was all these soft, subtle hues. And then you got one and- of Heather's paintings that is like, you know, bright and bold. You'd be like, what? What? It just doesn't make sense. Like if you came to my website and it was all calm, calm, calm. And then you looked at the pictures of the paintings and it was all bright, bright, bright. You, it would not jive. So you have to have these things have, you have to figure out the, the less obvious stuff, which funny enough, I'll tell you, knowing all of this stuff now, it's, they seem like less obvious touch points, but I feel if you're, once you nail and we're going to get into these, but once you figure this stuff out, figuring the rest out and running your business is so much easier it is because you know who you are it's just like yeah. when you turn 40 and all of a sudden you're like oh this is who i am let's yes. screw all this other stuff like... exactly <laughs> and i you know i think of your brand story and your mission and vision and we'll get to all of this stuff but it's very much like a um a decision tree right like it's just helping you make yes. the decisions is this on brand or off brand mm-hmm. and it it should help make all of those decisions on do I want to do this to move my business forward it should help make all of those answers very very clear for you yes sometimes knowing what you're not is just as powerful as knowing what you are and if you can have a place where you can put that um and this is something we did with our conferences in my other business we we would sit down every year and say this is what the conference is not (laughs) And then if somebody came to us and it was one of those things on the not list, it was so easy to say no, because yeah. that's not what we are. This is what we are. That's exactly yeah. it. And so, that's, and, and again, that might be something that you never publish, right? You oh, just hundred percent. Exactly. Like you don't put it out there and say, this is no for me because that's just weird energy to put out there. Yeah. But you have to have that list in the back of your brain because then it makes that decision tree so, so easy. Because one of the things about running a business is it is decision after decision after decision. It is decision fatigue. I think that's sometimes why so many businesses 
stop. Yes. You just get yeah. so tired of making decisions every day. Yeah. It's like uh-huh. to the point where you don't care what you eat for dinner because it's just one more decision. One more decision. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So this is where branding can be so helpful is it takes away a lot of the decision making for yeah. you or makes it yeah. much easier. So getting back to our obvious touch points, the, uh, the we really only had one or two left, but um, things like business cards and any printed communication that you send out, those, again, should be consistent with your logo, with your color palette, uh, with your story, all those types of things you want to have. You're just reinforcing who you are. All yeah. those pieces are just supporting characters yeah. in what your brand is. And humans are very visual, so that those visual communication pieces are so important. Another one on the list is your email signature. If you use an email signature, not everybody does, but if you do, again, you want it to be consistent. You want it to have your logo. You want it to um, maybe have your website and uh, match your color palette, those types of things. So these are all the obvious touch points. And if, as you probably noticed on the list, and as I've said, these are your brand's visual assets. They are not your brand, they're assets of your brand that are yeah. used to communicate what your brand is to your customer or your client. So this is why it's so important to understand a logo is not your brand. No, it's not. Your logo your is just a tiny piece of it. Yep. <laughs> it's a visual and representation. Fa- and in fact, if all of these things, like quite literally, if the zombie apocalypse happened and you no, no longer have a website, you no longer have social media profiles, all of your packaging and shipping supplies burned up, you're, there's no more email, but you are still here and you still have the ability to create your product. Your brand is still alive. Mm-hmm. You still have the ability to drive it and make decisions moving forward. It doesn't matter that all of those things have fallen away. They are not your brand. They help you communicate exactly. your brand. This is so they help important. You. Exactly. I just, I'm going to say it one more time. They are visual assets of your brand to help tell your brand story. They are not your brand. Branding is so much bigger. This is why there are companies out there that will charge $30,000, $40,000 to help a company with their branding because it's mm-hmm. so much bigger than that logo. Yep. Um, and so it's really not saying that you guys need to go out and spend thirty. dollars You don't. <laughs> you don't need to do that. But you do need to think beyond just your logo. And that's... that. Maybe we'll also helpfully help you understand why sometimes when a graphic designer offers a branding package and it seems very expensive, mm-hmm. it's probably because that graphic designer is going to sit down with you and draw out your brand story. Yes. So, And in fact, I'm working with a, a PR client right now who I'm developing their brand strategy and content strategy for them. And guess what they already have? A logo and a website. So we are actually backtracking. And we're not creating a new logo. So we're trying to make sure that the brand story that we want to communicate marries up with what we've already put out there. And that's a really awful Challenging. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So let's get into the less obvious touch points. These these really are the core of what your brand Mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So, And there's probably a few in here that you haven't thought of. But the first one is your brand story. And I actually think this is an obvious one, but based on what I've seen uh, in the I world, know. it's not. So we're putting it it's under not. less obvious. But your brand story, this one is the core of everything else that touches your brand. It's, yes. it's your story. And human beings thrive on story. We have mm-hmm. been telling each other stories since we were sitting around a campfire outside our cave at night since we were scratching drawings on cave walls Mm -hmm. we've been storytelling this is what makes us human Mm -hmm. and it's really important people for the most part for what we do from a creative standpoint people need to connect with us on some kind of level you know they're not going to the dollar store to buy some dollar yeah piece of whatever yeah (laughs) they are coming to you to purchase Mm -hmm. either a a service where they're going to work closely with you or a product that is going to have some kind of special meaning to them totally so your brand story is what you're about and i'm going to throw this one back to you heather because you are the pr person and let's talk about what your brand story is 
your brand story is very much, um, and, and everybody get your pen and paper ready because <laughs> your brand story is you need to very clearly communicate who you are, what you do, why you do it, how you do it, and when you do it. And we're going back to serious communication 101 level, the who, what, why, where, when, how question, which is you need to answer all of those for your brand. Who are you? What do you do? I am. And I like to think of it this way when you're crafting it is imagine a children's book, something like um, Good Night Moon, right? With a very clear visual front to it. You know, we can all, like I say, Good Night Moon, we can all picture that green and red and blue and like we can all picture the front of that book. And so it's a children's book. Your logo was on the front, your brand colors, your palette. Yes, it's there. The size of the book, that's all determined by your brand storytelling. But it's when you open the book, the insides, the telling of the story, that is what makes the cover mean something to you when you close the book. Oh, I and, love that. And that is what you need. Like you see the cover, great. When you read the book and you finish the book and you look at the cover again, the cover means something to you. Yes. And and that's what you want. Imagine writing your own children's book for your brand story. And when you close that book, does the front of it, do the colors, do the fonts, do does everything connect? And are you answering the key questions about your business, that who you are, what you do, why you do it? And the how you do it, even, you know, mm-hmm. um, and those are also very important. And there can be multiple answers for different streams of your business. So mm-hmm. when you think about, you know, my art process, there's a different who, why, what, where, when, and how to my shipping process. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the art process, how does it happen? It happens when I'm inspired. Shipping, shipping happens within one to three days of order process. <laughs> Because that's the story and that's the the customer service promise. And I think, too, promises, particularly with artists, I think promise is a big one in there. And I know we're going to talk about mission statement as well. But when you're thinking about your brand story, think about your brand promise. What are you promising somebody that they're going to get with your thing, your physical thing, and also every interaction? Yes. Are they are they going to get an email from you and say every e- email I get from Heather makes me feel light and happy, mm-hmm. or are they going to say, man, that bitch, I never want to <laughs> buy artwork from her again. <laughs> I'm going to go with option A, right? Exactly. Yeah. Your brand story. I think another thing to think about with your brand story is your brand story should reflect your brand's values, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. this is something that is becoming more and more important. I think in yeah the last few years it's always been important like let's not yeah let's let's not (laughs) pretend it hasn't been it's always been important but it's becoming extremely important to the consumer or the client we want to work with people who are aligned with our values Mm -hmm. and that's we're not going to get into what the right or wrong values are that's not up to us yeah your values are your values but you know, one of the things you just mentioned there was like, yours, there's your artistic process, there's the story behind that, and then there's the story behind your shipping. Yep. If your brand's values are that you, let's take the person who is putting together the Cheerio boxes and things for yep. shipping, right? Yep. If your brand values are around minimal waste, low environmental footprint, yep. reuse, reduce, reduce, reuse, recycle, yep. you know, then yes, that becomes part of your shipping story. Yeah. Right. So those are yeah. your your values are important and you have to find a way to communicate those. It doesn't yeah. have to be like my values are. Um, yeah. In fact, that would be a little weird, but <laughs> but it, it needs to be part of everything that you do. And um, there's a term for this. It's called values based marketing. Yeah. But it is at the core of your brand story, along with who you are, because mm-hmm. your values are part of who you are. Right. Um. So yes, those are all the pieces that are super important. And I love your example of the book. That is such a great way to describe it. We've all been in a library or a bookstore and we've seen all the covers and you see one that looks really cute. 
and it catches your eye and you pick it up and you read it and you're like, eh, not so much. Yeah. And you yeah. put it back on the shelf and you're not, suddenly that cover doesn't mean the same thing to you exactly. anymore. And then you see maybe one over here with a really plain cover and you're like, I don't know. It looks maybe like it might be boring, but you pick it up and the story captivates you. Exactly. Think of Catcher in the Rye. Oh, yes. Okay. Everybody in North America has had to read Catcher in the Rye at some yep. point in your academic journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. That cover has not changed no. for over half a century. <laughs> it is that. You can picture it right now. It's that burgundy cover with the yellow yep. font, right? Yep. Boring, yes. plain cover. And yet, how many of us read that book when we were 13, 14, 15 and had an immediate connection with Holden Caulfield? Oh, for sure. And, and... And, and funny enough, I can, and my mom's the same way, funny enough, I don't read, like if, if I'm going through my bookshelf and handing off books, which I, you and I do that. So like, oh my gosh, Melissa, here's my new stack. Right. And so if I, I have to look at the cover and be like, oh yeah, that's what this one was. It, it reminds me of the story within. And if the story within is not clear, like you've missed, you've missed the the point, and I've said it before, I don't have a logo for my business. I didn't even have, I don't even have a website for my PR side of my business. I only have a website for my art so that I can sell it. <laughs> and so you don't necessarily need the assets, but you sure as shit need the rest of it because who you are, like my, all of, and I can speak to even my PR side and my art side categorically, the values that I have for both of those businesses, because they're me and I operate them both are very closely aligned. And so I would not take on a project on the PR side and that's not written on, there's no website out there, but that's within me. And I can tell you that my clients just from interacting with me would never even recommend a client that they know I wouldn't work with because it's so obvious. Yeah. That that's and I feel like you should just ooze your brand story. Like your your brand story should drip off of you everywhere you go. Yeah. And it and it and almost think of it, and you touched on it a little bit earlier, Melissa. It's so the person that you put out into the world, right? It that's your brand. And the Melissa that's out there speaking either on behalf of FBC or on behalf of Fine Lime Designs. Those are absolutely Melissa, but they're the Melissa that you put forward for that business, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a very different thing than just Melissa on a Friday night with a cup of tea in the backyard. And, and it's not that they're different people, but I think you need to remember that even though you're, you are your brand and your brand is you, particularly as artists and creatives, you know, Melissa and I were talking about this offline. When I put my energy out, it's a very happy, positive, sunshiny person and if I am not going to be that person I don't put it out there it's not that I'm not that person right and same thing with your brand story if you're at a market for instance uh, a farmer's market an outdoor fair anything and you're selling your stuff you need to be the person the brand that they expect you to be mm -hmm. you cannot be and if and if you're having an off day those are the worst days but you still have to be there and present right and I'm not saying put on a false face or anything like that but you still need to be on brand because that's all that communicates who and what you are to the people around you like yeah. it, you need to put that the best brand foot forward yes yeah yeah and this is another thing to kind of think about just touching on what you said there is that if you are somebody who runs a business has your own business whatever it is, and you participate in online, in social media groups, um, I see this quite often on Facebook, particularly in my local community, where a lot of small businesses are in our local community Facebook group. Mm -hmm. And there's a handful of people who have businesses who do not put their best selves out there in the community Facebook yeah. group as a person. Mm -hmm. Not as their business, but, and yet everybody in the group knows that person runs this business. Correct. And there's this big disconnect between the business and the person who's showing up as a community member, as a, as a neighborhood yes. member. Yes. And you have to realize that people put those things together. Of course they do. So you need I to be uh, very careful yes. of how you 
interact with everybody yeah. when you run a yes. business. It, when it, we when we were lived in our old town, which was a very very small town, although this is even smaller. Our business and our house were within two blocks of each other, and in between those two blocks was the local grocery store. And I had a cashier at the grocery store say to me, you are just a giant ray of sunshine every time you come in here. And I said, I know. Mm -hmm. And she said, is that on purpose? Mm -hmm. And I said, "Uh uh-huh. And she looked at me and she said, really? I said, I own a business one block that way, and I have a house one block that way. Everybody knows who I am. I have no interest in having either eggs thrown at my business or my home. (laughs) And so I am going to come in here and yeah, I am. And you know what I'll tell you? I get more joy out of being a happy ray of sunshine and actually, and and like to me, the reaction that you get from being a joy of sunshine is, um, it's first off, it's much easier to be happy than it is to be sad. This, we could dwell on this in a whole other episode, but putting yourself out there, like you have to realize that people connect the dots, particularly as a small business owner. And even though you need to separate yourself from, you know, you and your business and your brand, there are boundaries that exist between those. And I think we should talk about that as part of the branding exercise is boundaries, but is, uh, they equate one with the other. And so if you're walking around and, you know, some people, if you're going to start talking politics, you're going to have to realize that if you put that foot out there, you're going to lose people over it. Um, and that's okay. That can there's be nothing okay. wrong with that. There exactly. Be, yes. There's, there's times where it's okay, but you just yeah. have to be very aware that. Be very aware. That when you put yourself out there, and this is particularly true of small business, you know, you could be an executive for a huge yeah. international corporation and probably nobody in your neighborhood Facebook group is going to know that or care. Yeah, correct. Um, but when you own a small business that people in your neighborhood interact with regularly on a daily basis, they care. Okay. And if you're nasty in, in, a, in a neighborhood Facebook group, why would anybody, if you're nasty to a person, they're not going to be super excited at jumping up and working with you. You have to be so aware that all of those things fill into it. And I think maybe now would be the good time to talk about boundaries, which is you need when you're starting to figure out what your brand story is. And when you're carving out the who am I, what do I do? Why am I doing it? How am I doing it? You might not know the answers to those questions. And that's okay. You're going to have to figure them out. But you can also very clearly say, okay, I know what I definitely am not. And if you start narrowing that what's outside the circle, the circle is going to start to shrink and you're going to start to see more of what you are. And to your point and what you said earlier, you know, I took on a commission years ago that now looking back, I'm very proud of it. It's beautiful work. But if you looked at it in a lineup of Heather Lynn Travis originals, it does not look like it came from me. It just is so not like it's signed by me. I painted it. I have pictures of me painting it in my studio. Like there's proof, there's evidence. I did it, but it doesn't look like me. Oh, and I, it's I know what painting it is too. <laughs> I know. And it's, yeah, exactly. I'm sure you can picture it. But it was a painting, and I was like, I was just so flattered that somebody wanted to give me money to do a commission that I didn't realize, ah, you know, it was, I'm glad I did it because I, the lesson is learned, right? Like I don't regret doing it, but now looking back on it, I realize how off brand it was because they were asking me to change my color palette. They were asking like so many things were so not Heather. Yeah. 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 I think too, as you start to figure out what you're not, this is where your mission statement yes. starts to evolve and be born. And a mission statement is, like, I would recommend a mission statement when you're first starting out. It can be extremely Mm -hmm. helpful. But the thing to remember with a mission statement is it will and it should evolve with you and your business. So don't feel like, oh, I have a mission statement. I'm I'm boxed in. You're not. It, It can absolutely change and evolve with you. But what a mission statement is or does, and again, you don't need to publish this. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. No. It's basically an internal branding piece yeah. that explain that that reinforces to you and anybody who works with or for you what it is that you that you do and what it is yeah. that you don't do in very condensed form. Yeah. <laughs> the more yeah. condensed the better I find for me. Like, yes. I'm like And I, this is not about using marketing buzzwords. No, 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 no. Or... This is just this no like 
Again, yeah. nobody needs to see this. This yeah. is just like, we do this. We yeah. do this. We do this. We do not do this. Yeah. The one I have for FBC, I think it's four sentences. And we've had it for years. And it just, every time we start to get lost or we're not sure what to do, we just go back to that. Does it fit in with these four core things? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We can do it. No. Okay. Decision made. Yeah. Um, so this is really, really important, and it just reinforces to you when you're. It's it's such a helpful decision making tool. Totally. Um, and if you start to notice that the decisions you want to make no longer fit with your mission statement, that's when it's probably time to start evolving your mission statement. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So again, really critical piece, not just for yourself, but for anybody who who touches your business internally. So if you have mm-hmm. a VA, if you have somebody who comes in to help you package product up once a week, if you have a bookkeeper, if you have an empl- like a, a, like an actual employee, mm-hmm. um, any of those people, they should be aware of your mission statement. And yeah. it should be something that should be reinforced with them because it's reinforcing your brand messaging with, ev- with the people who work for you and who are responsible for helping you put your brand out into the world. Mm-hmm. I'm going to skip a couple on our list here because what we just talked about there kind of runs into who you choose to work with. Mm -hmm. So this is another, this is a very less obvious part of your brand, but who you choose to work with speaks volumes about your brand silently. And Mm. this includes the suppliers that you purchase Mm -hmm. from, the Mm -hmm. employees and contractors that you hire and the Mm -hmm. people that you choose to collaborate with. Yes. Okay, and this is particularly important if you're really focused on values-based marketing. It is important that you know what other businesses that you align yourself with stand for. Yes. If they don't stand for the same things that you do, you need to think about whether or not they're a good fit for your brand. Yeah, yeah. Can't emphasize that enough. Yes, uh-huh. like the, um, I recently unfollowed, and I obviously will not say a name, but there was a sort of health lifestyle uh, person that I followed on Instagram that very much was all sustainability and green, and every, every single thing that they were recommending, you can buy from my Amazon list. And I just thought, hmm, that doesn't jive with me. That doesn't jive, like you, you're, te- n- no. That doesn't fit. That doesn't, the brand values don't align here for me. And so I've just decided I'm going to opt out of your story that you're trying to tell me. Yeah. And, you know, that's because they've aligned themselves and we see it, right? People, political associations. I remember years ago, I was a huge, I'm still a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, but I remember there was a president in the U.S. who tried to use his Born in the USA as his, their song. And he was like, ma uh no no (laughs) you are not using that song and you know you don't want to be you don't want to be seen as endorsing no and you (laughs) what they're putting out there exactly and that's also you know you can use those collaborations to your advantage so think through strategically what collaborators help communicate the story that you want to tell Mm -hmm. as opposed to what people help unwind the story that you're trying to tell you know you want to really elevate it yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, think, think that through. And you need to and think it also... through at all levels. Like think about if you yeah. have a product made, think about where it's made and who makes it. That's yeah. important. That's one that people yeah. ask about a lot, particularly if you are into fashion or fashion design. Mm-hmm. Um, think about what you ship your product in. There's a yeah. very well-known shipping company that has been very clear about where they stand politically on yep. certain things yeah if you and and any shipping materials that you purchase from them have their logo on them if you th- send something out with that logo on it are you okay with potentially being aligned with those particular political viewpoints exactly so those are the kinds of things and this was so interesting because several months ago and this revolved around shipping actually this came up in a in an etsy group i'm in where um one seller was like, I don't care who makes it as long as it's the cheapest one. Like, I don't see what that has to do with your branding. And and somebody else is like, well, actually, I think it has a lot to do with your branding. Yeah. It's telling me very much what your values are. You want the yeah. cheapest thing possible and you don't care who makes it or or what they Which stand for. Which is what you believe in. 
if that's what you believe in, that's and you, fine. then that's great. You, you march to your own and you keep going. But if you tell me that you're one thing and then you do something mm-hmm. else, and that's where I, I think a, a lot of time it, there's a disconnect. And I think too, and you've, you've said it before, Melissa, on this episode, but we've also talked about it, your brand evolves. Mm-hmm. And so you can say, and I know you and I have talked about this, like your sustainability journey it's not a, I, I used to be unsustainable and now I'm totally sustainable with my business. Like bullshit. Nobody can get from, from zero to hero in a minute. No. Whereas, so you can say, and this is part of communicating to your audience and strategically saying, everybody, I'm trying to be more sustainable. So here are the steps yes. that I've taken. I've gone from A to B. I'm trying to get from B to C. You know, here's what I'm doing. But in the meantime, we're going to have to keep doing this yes and and as long as I know man I've got your back I'm thank you yes right? there's an artist she's very well known on YouTube who is doing exceptionally well at this her name's Lee Ellickson and she has made it very clear where she stands on things like sustainable packaging and her environmental footprint and all of those things but she's also made it very clear that this is a huge learning process for her and yeah. she's not going to get it right every time but she does regular YouTube updates on this is where I'm at with my packaging now and she talks about all the things she's like you know what I started with this I thought it was a good option at the time but as I've done more research and as I've learned more and as technology evolves like now I'm moving to this yeah and it's a journey and to be quite frank I really appreciate it because she's doing a lot of the research for me this is all stuff I'm super interested in but here's this person who's like doing the hard part (laughs) and I get to learn from her and so that is part of who she is and her story that she's communicating to her audience yeah Um, and I think and just to sort of drive home the point that why why is all of this less obvious stuff so important why does all of this matter this matters because if that YouTube tutorial, if watching that and saying, man, I, this woman, she gets me, she speaks to my heart, mm-hmm. she's after the same things, the next time you purchase a pair of earrings from her or a greeting card or a painting, that's part of the story that you are telling yourself and reinforcing on. And so somebody says to you, wow, Melissa, super cute earrings, you know, when we can see people again. And <laughs> and you say, these are from, and they're not, oh, I got these here. That's not the end of the story. These are from an artist I follow, and she's this, 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 yeah. da, 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 because your brand story, we said it at the beginning, is not what you say, it's what your customers say it is. And the best advertising, marketing, promotion ever, ever, ever is your customers telling your brand story for you. And if you can connect with them on a level through that communication, the value that your brand has to them is so meaningful and it's much more than dollars. And that is something that you cannot underestimate in terms of the importance of carrying your business through is the intrinsic value that your brand, the feeling, the emotion, the connection that a community of people has to it, what that's going to do to carry your business forward. Absolutely. So you do want to be thoughtful about who you choose to work with. And coming on the heels of that, Part of your brand is also how you treat the people you choose to work with. And we kind of touched on this with like, you know, if you're a small business owner and, you know, you're out there in the community, Mm -hmm. how you treat the people that you come across, you don't know if they're a customer or about to become a potential customer or any of that stuff. So you need to think really carefully about what comes out of your mouth Mm -hmm. and how you make people feel Mm -hmm. um, because there's... What comes out of your mouth doesn't necessarily correspond with how you make a person feel. You can say the right things and still make a person feel yes. terrible. That's yes. important. But it's not just potential customers. It's not just the people who bring money into you. It is also the people that work for you. Totally. How do they feel about how they're treated? Does the way totally. you treat them... It's really great to say that, you know, we pay everybody who works for us a living wage. Do you? <laughs> Like, yeah, you need to make sure that you're doing that. Yeah. Um, if if sustainability and environmental responsibility are really important to you, are you reinforcing that in your workspace and in the mm-hmm. way that you work with your employees and the people who 
my dog is dreaming right now. I don't know if I anybody can hear that. I just heard it. It sounds like he was like, hello, I'm here. I like these ideas. <laughs> he's having a whole, he's chasing some squirrels. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, how you make those people feel when they work with you. If your employees are going home every night feeling bullied or like they've been treated badly or something, that's a reflection on your brand. Because those and employees it, talk to other people as well. Oh God, yeah, for sure they do, and 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 it doesn't even necessarily need to be you know people who you are on like a salary from you, but I think of you know the ladies in my local post office, their hands go on every single package that comes out of Heather Lynn Travis Studio, and so they're part they're part of the chain. Absolutely. And I, I I mean we've talked about me being a ray of sunshine everywhere I go, but. Every time I walk into the post office to deliver mail, to, to send out a new painting piece, whatever, the ladies at the post office, they're like, "Woo, we can tell you're here for art again. Like, look at the smile on your face because I want them to be just as happy to help me send that out. And as like, somebody who used to manage a retail outfit with a retail postal outlet in it, I can tell you the post office staff talks. <laughs> Exactly. And it can be good talk. It can be like, yes. oh, do you guys remember that lady who comes in every week with the paintings? Exactly. Like, I went and checked out her website. Her stuff is so cool. Okay, if you're yeah. a grouchy, snarky, obnoxious person when you come into the post office, nobody's checking out your website. Nobody cares exactly. what you sell. But if you're like the happy person who comes in and you're like, oh, I've got my painting and everything, they're yeah. going to be like, oh, let's go check her workout. And they're going to be in the back room on the computer going to your yeah. website. I 100% guarantee that. I know exactly. that because I've seen it happen. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, where you buy your art supplies, if you go to the same craft store, mm -hmm. if you go to the same paper store, you know, all of those people, they're part of, they might not be your employees. You, They might not know, you know, that you're Melissa from Fine Lime Designs, but they know that you're a local artist. Mm -hmm. They And and you, you, you truly never know. You truly never know who you're talking to. Like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon in this world are crazy. Um, <laughs> those, you know, those, the people who you're even interacting with, like that's part of communicating your brand. Yeah. I remember out being out for lunch once, uh, in, not in my normal neighborhood with my web developer, we'd gone for sushi and the sushi restaurant we went to was at the foot of the hill um, where SFU sits. SFU, Simon Fraser University sits on the top mm -hmm. of Burnaby Mountain. And to do anything at SFU, any kind of social activity, you have to go down the hill. <laughs> so, um, But SFU's campus is also host to some very high-tech uh, companies. And one of my closest friends, her husband, is a vice president in one of those companies. <laughs> and we were sitting having lunch. And the, the booths were very high, so you couldn't see the people around you. But you could hear them. And the person in the next booth to us, they were talking about their VP. Uh, and I was listening to the conversation. I could tell right away. I knew it was my girlfriend's husband. Yeah. And they, di they didn't say anything. They obviously really liked working for him. But the Good. thing was, like, it's, they didn't know who was sitting in the next booth. Exactly. Like, if they had said a whole bunch of horrible things, you can bet your bottom dollar I would have told my girlfriend, like, hey. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she would have said something to her husband, and he would have probably known who those people were. Yep. <laughs> so you just don't know just who's don't know. around you. And no. it's just so important to ensure that you're treating the people in a way that jives with your brand story. If you're yep. not, then your brand story isn't authentic. Totally. That's exactly it. And I think too, you know, we've touched on it before, but it's not like you're putting, you know, Heather, who's a ray of sunshine. That's me. It's not like I'm put. I'm not like walking around with this face mask on. No, and, and you're not faking it. Be, I'm not <laughs> faking it. And so I think if you, and if you have to fake it, then you've got your brand story wrong. Yeah. Um, or your, or you should not be the spokesperson. Right. There's and so yeah. maybe you need to hire somebody who's the spokesperson for your brand because you're just the maker behind it. Maybe mm -hmm. that's it. But if you're going to be the spokesperson for it, then you really need to emulate and you need to bring the personality. And if that's not sitting well with you, if that's not comfortable, uh, then and it's you need hard. to maybe rethink it. It is. It, it is. is hard. There are days where you are just at the end of your rope 
yeah. and you don't have a lot of patience left and something slips out. You, you make a snarky comment or you, you know, and totally. it's not who you are. I mean, it is who you are because it happened, <laughs> but yep. at the yep. same time, it, it happened because you're tired and you're yes. frustrated and Lord knows I've the done, last I've year. <laughs> Yeah, and I, you know what? Those are the Instagram posts that you. I post them, I make them, and then five minutes later, I'm like, mm, 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 delete. You delete it, or you, if you, it's something you say to a person in the moment, you know, you need to make sure you get on the phone and say, yeah. I am so sorry. I was just having a really bad day. Exactly. And, out, and it's not, you know, I didn't mean it that way. Yeah. And so, I think, too, you know, Gosh, and I've seen you shared it in your stories a couple days ago, and a lot of artists I've seen started sharing it around the Instagram algorithm doing bad things for artists, and that we have to focus on like constant con content creation and sharing and mm. the algorithm and all of that. And I agree with you. And I, I have been very. There's days where I quite literally you don't to, post. I don't post. You need to put your phone in another room. <laughs> Yeah. There's days and where your phone needs to be nowhere exactly. near Exactly. <laughs> and I don't worry about the algorithm because to me, it's much more important to be true to who I am and also recognize that today, um, funny enough, Heather, Heather's the, Heather's here for her monthly visit. Also, when the monthly visit happens and girls, we know what we're talking about. Sometimes I'm a little sharper than I <laughs> am not normally and those are the days that I tend to say to myself Heather you know that this is gonna you are sharper today so just stay away mm -hmm. and and just and it, and then that's the boundary that I've set for myself I don't even have to go back and course correct myself because I've I stayed away I <laughs> stayed away from the party I didn't say anything stupid yeah exactly yeah, yeah. um one of the other touch points, less obvious touch, I don't think this is a less obvious touch point, even though I put it in this category, but all your communication that goes mm -hmm. out to people, whether it's a client, a supplier, um, yep. somebody who's doing work for you, that all needs to be on brand as mm -hmm. well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that can be a little harder, I think in some ways, because you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody. But at the same time, if your brand is like, let's take Heather, for instance, her brand is bright, bold, cheerful, colorful. And if every email she, you know, Send you get from her sentence. is just her being grouchy, <laughs> it doesn't work. Okay. No. Like it has to be, it has to be bright and bold and fun. <laughs> totally. And a, a perfect example is years ago when we started the bike shop, um, I said to Brian, oh, well, you know, I'm better in social media than you, babe. I'll handle the social media. And I started doing quite a few of the posts and sort of pretending I was Brian. And he, he came to me and he was like, I had three people come into the bike shop today and tell me, so Heather's pretending she's you on Facebook, is she? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, it's so obvious. First off, you use way more explanation marks than anybody should humanly use in a sentence and like a couple of other things and so it it didn't yeah, like it, it didn't it, work it didn't, it didn't right. work like you couldn't I couldn't hide behind the keyboard and I think you know you can't you, ha you it comes through in writing and so I use all of my exclamation points and if you get an email from me without an exclamation point be very worried because it's <laughs> yeah. Now, maybe if you are somebody who works, um, who sells crystals or you mm -hmm. work in some kind of healing field or something mm -hmm. like that, where your vibe is very calm, very oh. controlled, very soothing, very relaxing. Again, that's how you want your communication to reflect. You don't want to be getting communication from somebody who is all these things on the outside and that yet yeah, the communication you get with them is sharp and demanding yeah it and seems frantic and frantic yeah. and yes frantic could you imagine <laughs> um you don't that your communication has to match the yeah. vibe that you're putting out there otherwise there's again it's the disconnect and that's mm -hmm. the part that clients and customers can't handle i i really can't handle that that is something my brain just does yeah. not function with it's like you say you're this thing but then I see you just doing this thing and my brain just goes Pow! yeah you know? and, you have, and you have to I mean appreciate that your your brand is a collective of all of these things yes. right like it's a collective of all of those things at the exact same time if you were to rip that one page out of the book and that page was an email communication 
if I were to find that email communication in a bus stop, would I get a sense of who you are from that? And would it be on brand? And, yes. and so no things don't need to be thought of in complete isolation, but they also kind of do. And so you need to think of the whole picture, but you also need to think like, if I rip this one little page out, is this, e is this one email? And like, I feel like that's getting a little buried in the weeds, but it's also not because that one email could be the difference between somebody saying, you know, I changed my mind on this purchase. Yeah. Or what if that person finds that email, <laughs> printed email at the bus stop and they take yeah. a picture of it and they share yeah. it on their Instagram. Look at this crazy email I found at the bus stop. Exactly. <laughs> All of a sudden that's, that's, that's what everybody that's what sees. Exactly. Um, I think this also carries over into all the systems you have within your business. Yes. And this is a touch point that gets lost so often. All the systems, and you should have systems in your business. If you don't, that's a different discussion. But all those systems that you implement that touch customers and potentially employees, things like onboarding, handling returns, responding to inquiries or complaints, all those systems that you have should reflect your brand so okay. at every at every step of the journey when a customer has a customer journey with you all those pieces should dovetail nicely together so that they yeah. feel like they're being they're on that's what it is it's a journey it's part of the story yeah. they're on the story yeah. and they know exactly what to expect it's like reading mm -hmm. a cozy mystery it's like you yes. know what's going to happen but yeah. you read it because it's comforting yeah. <laughs> um and that's what they want they just want that comfort level from the moment like they fell in love with the product mm -hmm. like oh my god this candle is beautiful the scent is exactly what i want in my home mm -hmm. the packaging is gorgeous i can't wait to buy it they buy it it gets shipped to them it's broken and they have to call contact you and how you respond to that is part of your brand yes okay and if they've bought this beautiful calming candle with the lovely delicate floral logo on it and it's all it's you know making them feel very zen and then all of a sudden yeah. you're like sorry that's not my problem that's you need to file a claim with the post office yeah what what <laughs> my zen feeling is gone no kidding <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so those are the types of things all those onboarding onboarding a new client if you work in any of like the services photography coaching writing all that kind of stuff that should set the tone they should know very they should have an instant idea of, as you go through the onboarding process of what it's going to be like to work with you. Yeah. Like those types of things. Same with your employees. Um, yeah. When they come through as a new hire, through their training process, all of that type of thing, it should make them feel like they are part of the brand story. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We're getting to the end of the episode. We have two more left. These are, are related to things we've already talked about, but they are community involvement and how you give back. So they're very similar to one another. But again, this is also part of the less obvious touch points of your brand. How are you involved in the community? Does it reflect mm -hmm. your brand's values? And how do you give back? Because mm -hmm. this is also very important. And we should all be giving back in some way. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be money. But mm -hmm. there are so many different ways you can give back to your community. Mm -hmm. And... Those are all very important to your overall brand messaging. T totally. And I think it's an extension of, and, and in fact, the community, you know, I think you can think of like there's the physical community that you, you know, physically live in and belong mm -hmm. in, but then there's also the community of people that yes. you're, you know, gathering your together. Industry. Your industry. Exactly. Community. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then even the community of people who like your things and mm -hmm. buy your things and your, your sort of tribe of people. And how do you, I think there's ways to give to all of those and to involve all of those and to lift each other up. And it, gosh, it could be as simple as just having a regular thing on your Instagram where you say, here's, you know, it's, do you remember the good old days on Twitter of follow Friday? Follow Friday. That? Yeah. Um, and so, but it could just be, you know, here's five artists who I love here, you know, here, go, go check out their accounts. Or it could be, here's five new charities that I've heard about that I believe in. And I wanted to bring to your attention. Like there's so many, there's so many little ways that really don't require like you're not, you know, no, Melissa, I'm be... asking for a thousand dollars worth of greeting cards to be donated, you know, no, like it, it could be as simple as mentoring a new 
yeah. member in in your field. So yeah. you know, if you're a photographer, maybe you bring on uh, somebody who wants to become a photographer. They come along mm-hmm. with you on your next shoot and see how it's yeah. all done. Or you could be offering mentoring to another artist. Mm-hmm. Um, you could be teaching an art class for kids in your local yeah. community. These are all ways that you can be involved and give back at the same time. They're kind of, yeah. they, they go hand in hand, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and all of that gives you, again, an opportunity to reinforce your brand story. And one totally. thing that we completely did not mention on this episode, but that is so crucial and it goes back to your website, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is the ob- one of the obvious touch points. And that is tell your story yes. on your website. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so obvious that we forgot to talk about it. But yes. this is something that is missing from so many websites is tell yeah. your story. It doesn't have to be like, I was born. No. You know, like it doesn't have to be that kind of story. But tell the story of where what where your business evolved from what gave you the idea what's important to you why are you here why are you doing this who are you hoping to reach and how are you hoping to make them feel tell that story and make sure that all the assets the visual assets on your website reinforce that story yeah and i would say you know this goes back to our uh the cheerio box shipping story Mm -hmm. but if you know you don't need to have this big long like scroll scroll Mm -hmm. scroll here's my whole like every single touch point thing you you give the bits of the story when the bits of the story are necessary and so that shipping story in your packaging that's really only necessary in an faq about shipping and packaging and once i place the order and once i place that order Hey, thanks so much for your order. Heads up, it's going to come in a super janky package, but I stole it out of the recycling and that's part of me being awesome. Yeah. And, and and again, I think too, you know, the words that you use to tell that story also help communicate your brand. Mm-hmm. And so if you're working with somebody like a me, for instance, who would, when people hire me to help develop their brand story and then write it for their website, you have to make sure that that voice is your voice, right? Yeah. Um, and that it matches. And so this is, you know, a lot of artists do it themselves, which I obviously encourage you to to think using your own words. But remember that those words, and we're obviously, um, words are really, really important. Mm-hmm. And so how you use them and where you use them are really both key in communicating the story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah words matter so oh my gosh very carefully yes yes and you know the whole crazy packaging that you're sending out and you're going to send them an email saying like you're going to get this in a used (laughs) kellogg's cereal box or whatever (laughs) that i pulled out of the recycling that shouldn't come as a surprise to them when when they like there should be something on your website that is showing these people that you know you I believe that, in that you believe farm, in yeah. reuse, reduce, recycle. That you are working towards yeah. minimizing your environmental footprint. Like those are all things that should be told. Not necessarily like I am working to reduce my overall yeah. environment. You don't necessarily have to have that sentence, but all the messaging on that website totally should somehow make yeah. it so that when they get that email saying you're going to get this in crazy packaging, they're not even remotely surprised. Exactly. They'll be like, of course it is. And yes. like, and, and that's, it shouldn't. So it, it's almost, if it is a supply, a, a surprise, it's like a pleasant, of course bonus. it is. Yeah. So, exactly. <laughs> and it's a surprise and delight, mm-hmm. not a surprise and shock. And I think that that's where, you know, you can surprise your customers in lots of different ways. You know, you don't need to be all out there all the time. Um, and you can surprise them with new elements of who you are, what you're doing, but you need to bring them along that journey, right? Yeah. And and tell them the background. Yes, exactly. You know? So it's, Heather and I did a whole episode on how to surprise and delight your customers. And I, I recommend you go back and listen to it if it's something that you really would like to do. And I'll put the episode number in the show notes. But when we say surprise, it shouldn't be a surprise that, oh my God, this is going to come in crazy packaging. It should be a surprise like, oh, yay, it's going to come yeah. in crazy packaging. Like it's it's not and a surprise and like, Melissa. oh my God, this came exactly. out of nowhere. Exactly. <laughs> just... And that's exactly it. It's like a, it's like a good surprise. Like Yes. It's just, yeah. 
Um, it's a surprise, but if you put some, if you start to think about it, it's not a surprise. Exactly. Yes. That's probably the best way to explain it. I think. Yeah. I hope we made that clear. <laughs> yes. Well, it is. I mean, it really is. It's something that you knew to be true. You just hadn't been told it yet. Or yeah. you hadn't been told it explicitly. Exactly. And so, and so then seeing it, you're like, well, of course, Melissa is going to do that because that's so Melissa, right? Yeah. Like that's so Raven. That's the way that <laughs> that's what's going to happen. And so you've if you've done a good job of communicating your brand story these little and maybe surprise is not the right word but these sort of touches, um, little brand touches, touches yeah. exactly they're just uh, they're not surprise they, they shouldn't be something that's it but it's an enlightenment it's like ooh, new but not new exactly yeah. So I hope this week that we have shown you how your brand is so much more than your logo Mm -hmm. um, and that your logo is just a piece of your brand because this is really key to running a successful business. Yeah. People expect consistency and a story and they, they want to, (laughs) people like stories, but they also don't like surprises yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean and I'm talking about the bad kind of surprises yeah. they want consistency there's a reason why when you drive down a highway or an interstate and you come across those rest stops and plazas and they all look the same yeah okay it's because people just that's what people are comfortable with yeah. right so you don't want to come out of left field with something that does not align with the message that you've been putting out over and over and over again um, yes. because it's unexpected and it's like whoa what happened so yeah I hope that this week's episode really gave you some things to think about in terms of your branding and um, if you are struggling with your branding um, I hope it gave you some things to focus on and I hope it also opened up some eyes in the sense that made you realize that there are some parts of your business that maybe need to be a little more in tune with your brand Mm -hmm. Um, because I think that's a, a learning experience for every business is recognizing that all these pieces need to speak the same language (laughs) yeah and I think too I think also if you're building a business or you're sort of in the phase of you're building up a business you're in the stages of launching a business don't get hung up on I don't have a logo yet I can't Mm -hmm. launch I don't I don't have business cards yet I can't launch no if you're if you have your brand story and you know what your mission vision values are you know your who why what when you go ahead and launch your business. You're ready to go. Yeah. Logos can be changed. Um, exactly. Ideally, you don't want to change them too frequently, but they can yeah. be changed as you evolve. Um, exactly. And so can your brand palette and all those things. Yeah. So once you have that story solidified, that's when you can start going out and sh- start putting pulling together yeah. all those visual assets for your brand. Yeah. So yeah. And, and you can, we've talked about it too, know that it will evolve mm-hmm. and you can have you know, your goal could be to be 100% sustainable, but you are starting out at 50%. Yep. And and Just, then tell us that story. Our exactly. goal is to be 100%. We're starting out at 50. Here's what we're going to do to get there. Yeah, absolutely. That's all people yeah. want to know. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, I think that's it for this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was not just Heather and Melissa. It was also Sam and Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then he, he got up and left, apparently. Jeez, why would you, apparently, we did not do a good job of keeping yeah. these, this, this our, one Our dogs made their presence known this week, so I hope you enjoyed that. They say hi. They say hi. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's it for this week. I'll be back next week with another new episode, and Heather will be back next month with another guest appearance. Thanks, Heather. We'll talk to you Bye. all next week. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for the And She Looked Up Creative Hour. If you're looking for links or resources mentioned in this episode, you can find detailed show notes on our website at andshelookedup.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for our newsletter for more business tips, profiles of inspiring Canadian creative women, and so much more. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe to the show via your podcast app of choice so you never miss an episode. We always love to hear from you, so we'd love it if you'd leave us a review through iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Drop us a note via our website at anshelookedup.com or come say hi on Instagram at anshelookedup. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.